for now. Da, das path opel. Hope you had a lovely weekend. Today we're going to carry on for Amser's story with James and the giant peach, and we are on chapter eight. Okay. The news that a peach almost as big as a house had suddenly appeared in someone's garden spread like wildfire across the countryside. And the next day, a stream of people came scrambling up the steep hill to gaze upon this marvel. Quickly, Anne Sponge and Anne Spiker called in carpenters and had them build a strong fence around the peach to save it from the crowd. And at the same time, these two crafty women stationed themselves at the front gate with a large bunch of tickets and started charging everyone for coming in. Roll up, roll up, Anne Spiker yelled. Only one shilling to see the giant peach. Yeah. Half price for children under six weeks old, Aunt Sponge shouted. One at a time, please. Don't push, don't push. You're all going to get in. Hey, you, come back there. You haven't paid. By lunchtime, the whole place was a seething mass of men, women and children, all pushing and shoving to get a glimpse of this miraculous fruit. Helicopters were landing like wasps all over the hill and out of them poured swarms of newspaper reporters, cameramen and men from the television companies. It'll cost you double to bring in a camera, and Spiker shouted. All right, all right, they answered. We don't care. And the money came rolling into the pockets of the two greedy ants. But while all this excitement was going on outside, poor James was forced to stay locked in his bedroom peeping through the bars of his window at the crowds below. The disgusting little brute will only get in everyone's way if we let him wander about, Aunt Spiker had said early that morning. Oh, please, he had begged. I haven't met any other children for years and years, and there are going to be lots of them down there for me to play with, and perhaps I could help you with the tickets. Shut up, Aunt Sponge had snapped. Your Aunt Spiker and I are about to become millionaires and the last thing we want is the likes of you messing things up and getting in the way. Later, when the evening of the first day came and the people had all gone home, the ants unlocked James's door and ordered him to go outside and pick up all the banana skins and orange peel and bits of paper that the crowd had left behind. Could I please have something to eat first, he said. I haven't had a thing all day. No, they shouted, kicking him out of the door. We are too busy to make food. We are counting our money. But it's dark, cried James. Get out, they yelled, and stay out until you've cleaned up all the mess. The door slammed and the key turned in the lock. Chapter 9 Hungry and trembling, James stood alone out in the open, wondering what to do. The night was all around him now, and high overhead a wild white moon was riding in the sky. There was not a sound. Not the movement. Can you see him? Most people, and especially small children, are often quite scared of being out of doors alone in the moonlight. Everything is so deadly quiet, and the shadows are so long and black, and they keep turning into strange shapes that seem to move as you look at them. And the slightest little snap of a twig makes you jump! James felt exactly like that now. He stared straight ahead with large frightened eyes, hardly daring to breathe. Not far away, in the middle of the garden, he could see the giant peach towering over everything else. Surely it was even bigger tonight than ever before. And what a dazzling sight it was. The moonlight was shining and glinting on its great curving sides, turning them to crystal and silver. It looked like a tremendous silver ball lying there in the grass, silent, mysterious and wonderful. And then all at once, little shivers of excitement started running over the skin on James's back. Something else, he told himself. Something stranger than ever this time is going to happen again. He was sure of it. He could feel it coming. He looked around him, wondering what on earth it was going to be. The garden lay soft and silver in the moonlight. The grass was wet with dew and a million dewdrops were sparkling and twinkling like diamonds around his feet. And now suddenly the whole place, the whole garden seemed to be alive with magic. Almost without knowing what he was doing, as though drawn by some powerful magnet, James Henry Trotter started walking slowly towards the giant peach. He climbed over the fence that surrounded it and stood directly beneath it. He put out a hand and touched it gently with the tip of his finger. 
It felt soft and warm and slightly furry, like the skin of a baby mouse. He moved a step closer and rubbed his cheek lightly against the soft skin. And then suddenly, while he was doing this, he happened to notice that right beside him and below him, close to the ground, there was a hole in the side of the peach. It was quite a large hole, the sort of thing an animal about the size of a fox might have made. James knelt down in front of it and poked his head and shoulders inside. He crawled in and he kept on crawling. This isn't a hole, he thought excitedly, it's a tunnel! The tunnel was damp and murky and all around him there was a curious bittersweet smell of fresh peach. The floor was soggy under his knees, the walls were wet and sticky and peach juice was dripping from the ceiling. James opened his mouth and caught some of it on his tongue. It tasted delicious. He was crawling uphill now, as though the tunnel were leading straight towards the very centre of the gigantic fruit. Every few seconds he paused and took a bite out of the wall. The peach flesh was sweet and juicy and marvellously refreshing. He crawled on for several more yards and then suddenly, bang! The top of his head bumped into something extremely hard, blocking his way. He glanced up. In front of him there was a solid wall that seemed as first as though it was made of wood. He touched it with his fingers. It certainly felt like wood, except that it was very jagged and full of deep grooves. <gasps> Good heavens, he said, I know what this is. I've come to the stone in the middle of a peach. When he noticed that there was a small door cut into the face of the peach stone, he gave it a push and it swung open. He crawled through it and before he had time to glance up and see where he was, he heard a voice saying, Look who's here! And another one said, we've been waiting for you. James stopped and stared at the speakers, his face white with horror. He started to stand up, but his knees were shaking so much he had to sit back down again on the floor. He glanced behind him, thinking he could bolt back into the tunnel the way he had come, but the doorway had disappeared. There was now only a solid brown wall behind him. <gasps> and that takes us to the next chapter, chapter 11. I wonder who it was that said, hello, and we've been waiting for you. Hmm. We shall wait and see. We will find out on Dee's Market Wednesday. Okay, that's it for today's Amster story. Take care. Enjoy this week's um, scoop activities and I will see you on Wednesday. Borda, um, double key.